Hey beauty babes, welcome to my channel. I'm Maria, aka Agape Love Girl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be doing my makeup. We're going to do a little chit chat, get ready with me. I wanted to do a little Q&A just to kind of get back into um, the swing of things with filming. As you guys know, I've kind of taken a little bit of a break filming. I did post last week, um, but I've, I haven't really put a lot of focus on filming, but I want to slowly start getting back into it. And I thought it might be fun to do a little Q&A. So I asked that on my Instagram for you guys to ask me anything. And I got a few questions, so I'm going to go ahead and a answer them as I do my makeup today. Now, as you can see, I do already have my eyes done. Um, I did use shadows from Sydney Grace, so I'm working on a full review video of their shadows with some tutorials. Um, I used their Danny's Dream Bundle, which is a, a bundle of a bunch of green shadows. So that's what I've got on my eyes today. Details coming soon in that video, so stay tuned. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and do the rest of my face for today's video. I'm not really going to be talking about the products, I don't think. I just want to focus on the questions. Um, but I will have everything listed and linked in the description box if you are curious about what I am using. So anyways, that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just going to go ahead and start by priming my face uh, with the She Knows 24 Karat Elixir. Um, and then I'll go ahead and look at the first question because I do like to let my primer uh, set for just a little bit before... Um, I go in with foundation and things like that. So. so choosing to take this little bit of a social media break has kind of come in at the perfect time. I decided to do that right before all this happened with the uh, coronavirus and having to uh, deal with quarantine and stay home orders and things like that. And it's actually worked out really nicely for me because um, I do have my kids home and we've really just been focusing on um, a lot of family time and just doing things together. I feel like it was really nice for me because then I didn't really have to stress too much. I really just needed time to, to de-stress and not be overthinking and have really enjoyed using this time to just focus on my, my family and my kids and enjoy that time together without stressing about work stuff or YouTube and things like that. So I really enjoyed this this break. Um, but uh, since this social distancing has been extended, um, I am ready to kind of get back to um, somewhat normal stuff here on my channel, at least I hope, um, and get back to filming a lot more regu regular <laughs> regularly. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do um, as I start. But anyways, I am going to go ahead and find the questions here. And also I remember that I had some old um, questions before that I never got around to answering. So I have a couple old questions um, from a while ago that I'll include in this video. So. All right, so the first question I have is, what is your favorite Bible scripture? This is a really great question. I love this question, but it's also a little bit of a hard question because I have, I have a lot of favorite Bible verses. It really just depends. Like I kind of Feel like if you were to ask me what's your favorite you know verse on this topic or this topic um then maybe i can give a better answer because i don't it's hard to to choose just one favorite bible verse there's just so many that are so great and that i love at different points in my life or for different reasons and things like that but one that i can think of at least um that i think would be great to share right now for this time frame that i was reading just the other day um, that is really speaking to me, especially, like I said, for this time and what we're going through is in Philippians. I'm just going to pull it up in my Bible app. Philippians, book four, verses four through eight. So it's kind of a, a long, several verses, but I'm just going to go ahead and read it. So it is, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think of such things. Now, I really like that Bible verse, especially for right now. That's one that I keep, you know, going to and thinking about because right now it's such a, you know, crazy time. There's a lot of people who are really anxious, dealing with anxiety, dealing with uncertainty, dealing with fear of the unknown. Um, there's a lot of, you know, obviously sickness going on, um, people losing jobs, you know, the whole world essentially is shut down and it seems very, very scary. Um, and so this verse comes to mind and has become a favorite of mine lately just because I feel like it gives a sense of 
what to do, you know, not be anxious, but to go to God, present your requests and your thoughts to God, talk to God, lean on Him. And I love how it then gives you other things to focus on. Instead of the worry and the chaos in the world, it says whatever is right, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, you know, all these good things, whatever is excellent and good, um, think of those things. And so I feel like it's just a really great verse to think about um, during this time. And just encouragement to just lean on God and allow him to give you um, his peace. I know that's a lot easier said than done, um, but the Bible also says that, you know, what can worry do? Can it add, you know, anything to your life? You know, it doesn't add anything good to your life. Worrying doesn't do anything good for you, so it's best for us not to worry. So this, in a sense, is a verse uh, um, that helps you, you know, give you an alternative of, of worrying because worrying doesn't change anything. Um, but if we are thinking, you know, more positive, um, that can definitely change how we're feeling and, you know, change our outlook in, in life um, and help us just to be leaning on, you know, God who will give us peace. So, um, and, and I feel like that truly helps. All right, and another verse I really like, I'm, I'm just going to share these two, but another verse I really like is Ephesians 4, 20, 29. This is a Bible verse that I um, always have in my Instagram bio, if any of you guys have ever noticed, but um, it's, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And I really like that one as a favorite, as a, as a reminder, because that's something I like to promote on my channel. I say it all the time, or I don't know if I say it all the time, but I know I've said it often enough, like, you know, in different, um, maybe it's like tag videos or just questions if people have asked, like, you know, whenever, um, you know, I'm asked about like negative comments, do you ever respond back or clap back to negative comments? And, and I've responded and said that, you know, I don't, I, I always try to be encouraging and positive and, and respond back to negative comments um, with something positive. Um, and not just that, like I try to keep my channel positive. Um, I want my channel and, you know, my social medias to be a place of encouragement, of, of you know, positive things. And I feel like for the most part, it, it very much so is with my community. I don't really get too many hate comments or mean comments, um, barely any. Um, but I do every once in a while and I'm not someone who, you know, calls them out or goes and claps back and is mean because I don't find that to be helpful to anybody. I, and, and I've said it before that often enough I feel like when I respond back kindly or nicely, it's not what the other person was expecting. And often I'll get an apology or just whatever the case may be, um, and just turns their mood around. It's more helpful to be encouraging. I mean, does it always work? No, but um, I feel much better knowing that I am being positive, encouraging, that my words are being um, helpful and, you know, good. So anyways, it's just a favorite verse of mine. Am I always perfect at that and um, always have wholesome talk coming out of my mouth. No, of course not. I'm human. Um, but that is a verse that I really love and try to reflect on and try to always remind myself of. That's why I keep it in my bio um, as a reminder to always try to be encouraging and uplifting because that's like a desire and goal of mine, especially with my social medias. So those I would say um, are among my favorite Bible verses. And if you have a favorite Bible verse, I would love to hear from you guys please feel free to share your favorite Bible verses with me and share why. I would love to hear what your favorite Bible verses are and why they're your favorite. So, and I think that'd be actually really encouraging to be able to read comments with Bible verses in this video. So if you have one, I would love for you to please share it with me. All right, so the next question is, so many people complain about beauty burnout. What products excite you most? I still love makeup. <laughs> Um, this is a really great question. I actually have experienced beauty burnout for sure. Just so much. There's so much always being released and going on and it gets like overwhelming for sure. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't like let it get to me. I will say though that taking this kind of like bit of a social media break, I wasn't completely off of social media like Absolutely. Um, I was on just a, a little bit here and there, but I wasn't making it my main focus and I wasn't really creating anything new. So I just had that type of a break, but I still checked in here and there, but not so much to where I was like really keeping up with anything. So it just felt really nice not to like be constantly bombarded with like a bunch of stuff and feel like I need to keep up with, with everything. Um, so anyways, um, I totally get that beauty burnout um, here and there, but I still really love and enjoy makeup too. And so to answer the question, what, um, what products excite you most? 
I would say I still get really excited about eyeshadows. I think that's one of the most fun things. And I don't think I'll ever really get bored of um, eyeshadows. I still think they're really exciting and fun. Um, but do I feel like I need to purchase every new palette or anything that comes out? Absolutely not. Like, I don't. Um, something else that also still kind of gets me excited is anytime there's like a new foundation re release or launch, um, that still kind of gets me excited. I'm always really, really curious about foundations, but I am actually really, really picky about foundations. So there's a big part of me that always feels like compelled to want to try all the new foundations. Um, but oftentimes I end up feeling a little bit like um, unimpressed like I'm so picky uh, I use today uh, the 4-in-1 um, the Love Your Selfie foundation from Pure it, it, which is still my favorite and I still compare every foundation to it and still always want to keep going back to it <laughs> because it's just the best and like nothing really for me compares to it but I'm still always intrigued and excited to try something uh, new just to see <laughs> but the pure one is my absolute favorite. All right, so the next question is, uh, would you buy awesome makeup cheaper in ugly packaging or pay more to have pretty packaging? Okay, uh, I definitely think like I, while I really appreciate packaging and love that, you know, a product is really, really good, plus has really gorgeous packaging, um, I think that's really, really awesome. But if it could be something I absolutely love, um, but made more affordable, I am definitely willing to purchase it without the pretty packaging. Um, now, like, if it's purposely being made a ugly packaging, that's kind of a funny way to, to ask it. Would you buy it cheaper in ugly packaging? <laughs> I don't think there's really anything that I purchased makeup-wise, even cheap, that is ugly, like has ugly packaging, but maybe more basic packaging or cheap packaging. Um, I guess some people might consider that ugly. <laughs> But yeah, I don't buy something just for the packaging. I I'm, no, I admit I have in the past, I'm sure, bought something just because I had cute packaging or have been like compelled to want to buy something just because of the cute packaging. But as of like now, like I'm pretty, I feel like I'm pretty good at like not buying something for packaging. In my experience, sometimes things that have really amazing or pretty packaging or really cute packaging, um, the quality isn't always that great. So it's kind of a trade-off. So it's really great when the packaging is really good and the quality is really good and it's affordable but that's pretty rare so um there's definitely a lot of products that i buy that i think are pretty basic like the packaging is really basic and there's nothing fancy but the product is really amazing like i'm all about that as long as the the quality of the product is really good i don't really care what the packaging looks like to be honest <laughs> so the next question is how are you doing during this time <laughs> That is very thoughtful. Thank you for asking. Um, I'm doing, we're doing really good, um, actually. It is very different, I will say, to have, like, my kids home and to not really be able to go anywhere. Um, it's uh, very just different. Um, I would say, I guess, it's not, like, too different for me because typically I am home quite a bit um, uh, on my own um, since I do work from home. What's different for me is just having my kids home, having my husband home, um, not really being able to do anything outside of the home. We do still go on walks. We are very fortunate to have like a pretty big backyard, an area where there's no one behind us and we can kind of walk and explore and enjoy the outdoors without being around people. Um, so that's been really nice. Um, we've uh, just really been enjoying the time together. Typically we are a pretty busy family um, with my kids in sports and my daughter is pretty active in school so she's always got school activities. I feel like we are constantly in a lot of different directions um, and uh, you know just we do make time to spend together as a family but we are still very busy um, and this time has been kind of really great actually for us as a family to really have no other distractions nothing else to keep us busy and like I said I've kind of taken a little bit of a social media break I wasn't filming for a bit um, and just uh, in, have been enjoying this time together as a family um, so that's been really nice we're just really focusing on like the positive things the good things you know and not worrying about like all the other <laughs> crazy stuff just focusing on what we can um, and just enjoying this time together um, but yeah the difference for me is like not is that everybody is home and, and it's nice but it is very different um, I am someone who's not like super social I'm very much so an introvert and keep to myself so as far as like not not like as far as social distancing and not being around people I'm not like too upset about that um, but I know my husband is going a little bit stir crazy because he is very much so and 
extrovert and loves being around people and things like that so for him he's going a little bit um, stir crazy it is a little bit difficult for my kids because um, you know as, as much as it's you know every kid's dream to not have to go to school um, they've kind of realized like how much this really kind of sucks you know they miss their friends um, this is a whole portion of the rest of the school year that they that is really uncertain they don't know how they're gonna finish my um, middle son is an eighth grader so a graduation that's something that's um, you know their you know the eighth grade graduation celebration that time um, he, I don't we it's really uncertain I don't think that's gonna happen of course I'm sure they will graduate but as far as having a ceremony and things like that that's gonna be something he probably doesn't get um, and I know there's greater things in the world to be <laughs> upset or worried about um, you know so not to take away from from that but I just think about those things it's kind of like a bummer um, that they don't get to be around their friends or do typical things my daughter I was really really excited about um, uh, a dance show. She's in dance class and she they were going to be doing a dance show um, and that is cancelled. She didn't get to do that and she was so excited for that and this is the last year she's taking dance. It was the first and last year she'll be taking dance so um, she, you know that's kind of a bummer so it's it's uh, you know there are things that are really uh, big bummers and, and things like that but overall we are healthy. My family is healthy and um, we are doing well. Um, so I, you know, we really can't complain. We are just using this time, like I said, to focus on the good things, the time we get to spend together, um, having, you know, family meals together again and, um, praying together. Um, you know, my husband, like I said, he's been going a little bit stir crazy. So he's been doing all kinds of cooking and learning how to bake. We've been baking our own bread and things like that and just kind of connecting as a family. And it's been really, really great. We're just really trying to focus on, on the good things. We have done kind of like a schedule thing. Um, I'm sure a lot of places are doing this. Um, a lot of schools, a lot of states or whatever are doing where um, schools are sending home like uh, supplemental packets. Um, uh, I think our school's calling it like enrichment packets or something. They're not mandatory, but it still gives students something to work on um, while they're out of school. Um, so we have set up like a little area in our home where our kids, like we have them for a couple hours, not like crazy long, like normal school hours, but two to three hours a day where we have them go down there and do some work, have them read, do whatever. So it's kind of, we, we're trying to keep it still structured. Um, We've been, um, we have a little bit of gym equipment in our shop, so we go out and, and uh, work out a little bit in our shop as a family, and um, just we're trying to keep things relatively structured so it's not like super chaotic. Um, uh, so, you know, just doing what we can to get through this time, and it's, and it's been different, but it, I think it's been good. Um, I will say that one thing I absolutely do miss is that um, obviously with everything shut down, um, that our gym is shut down and things like that, which totally makes sense. Wouldn't be going there anyways um, if it were open. Um, but I do miss working out, like actual going to the gym and working out like and stuff like that. But we have enjoyed um, the time we've, <laughs> the little bits of workouts we've been able to kind of get, get in together as a family and things like that. So anyways, all that being said, we're doing good. I would love to know how you guys are doing. Um, and hopefully you guys are staying safe and healthy and all that. Um, if you guys have any, you know, prayer requests or anything like that, I put a little thing on my community tab, um, if asking if anybody had any prayer requests so I could be praying for you. I am taking some time every day uh, to pray, and we are as a family as well, so I would love to include you guys in, in any prayers if you have any, so please share with me how you guys are doing during this time. I hope you guys are staying healthy and well. All right, I've rambled on enough about that uh, with that question, so the next one is what keeps you motivated? Ooh, this is like a really good question. Kind of a tough question. Um, I want to, like, I feel like I just want to be like, I don't know what keeps me motivated. I don't know. Um, in what aspect, I guess, what keeps me motivated? If it is for, like, YouTube here, um, like, I am a very creative person. I have lots of ideas. So what keeps me motivated, I would say, is, like, the ideas I have and wanting to create, to create them. What hinders me is the time. Like, sometimes I don't always have the time. Um... But anyways, what keeps me motivated is just like I always have these ideas and I and I always have to write them down because otherwise I'll forget. So just wanting to put my ideas out there and bring them to life, whether it is you with YouTube or a makeup look or, you know, I do, I used to make jewelry and I used to make headbands and I've kind of wanted to get back into doing that again just because I, I feel like we have a little bit more time on our hands. Um, uh, I paint and things like that. And so I just, I like creating. So I feel like the creative process, like I really enjoy that. And that's, I, I would say, what keeps keeps me motivated. This is such a pretty highlighter. This is the um, Gerard Cosmetics Star Powder in the shade Marilyn. 
So the next question is, is there anything new in the makeup world you're eyeballing? And if so, what what is it if you want to share? So <laughs> um, that's actually a really great question. I feel like honestly right now nothing much okay, okay so you know how earlier i said like i've kind of taken a break and so i haven't really paid much attention to you know um what new things that have been launching and things like that i haven't really been paying that much attention and i actually noticed that the other day because i sometimes like i said I've, I've still been kind of getting on i'll post like maybe one thing or whatever but i usually kind of post and then get off social media i haven't really been scrolling through the feeds or i haven't even really been watching much uh youtube i've been on tiktok and active on tiktok quite a bit tiktok has been like kind of like a new discovery for me that i'm like low-key becoming slightly obsessed with <laughs> But anyways, um, I was thinking that I haven't really been on like Instagram to see like what's new. So I actually went over um, to um, like the Trend Mood page and then um, Indie Makeup Spotlight because those are pages that post about like new makeup releases and things like that to see like what's new, what's been launching. I have no idea what's what's new in the beauty industry right now. Like I don't know what's launching. And I went and looked through the, their um, posts and I actually was thinking like there's really nothing... Maybe it's just because right now there's not a lot launching, I don't think, either. Like, I think a lot of, of everything has slowed down, so that makes sense. But there's still some new things launching. But even still, there wasn't anything that I saw that was really catching my attention. I wasn't like, oh my god, this is new and I really want it. Um, so, really nothing new um, that uh, that has caught my eye recently. And it's funny because I was kind of like itching to, to shop and buy some things, but like I was looking and I'm like, mm, I don't believe there's nothing here that's really interesting to me that's making me want to buy it. So um, I guess I would say like th this isn't new, but like I've been uh, kind of becoming more and more, uh, I, I was going to say obsessed, but I feel like I just said that about TikTok, but it's kind of true. Like that's just the word I can think of um, with Sydney Grace. Like, like I said, I'm wearing Sydney Grace eyeshadows um, on my eyes today and I've, as I've been using the products to review them uh heads up i'm in love i love them and i keep going back to their page and saying like what else can i buy i want to buy more stuff from them <laughs> but other than that really nothing new i don't know i feel like uh, everything's a little bit just mm, not catching my eye all right let's go ahead and move on because i'm almost done with my makeup but um so this says how long have you been doing makeup tutorials online okay this is a great question i have been um i would say I think I've had my channel six or so years now, maybe since 2012 or 2013. Uh, or so, wow, no, that would be longer. But even before I did my channel, my YouTube channel, um, I did do makeup stuff on my blog for at least a year or two, possibly two years. So I feel like at least nine years, I would say, roughly, maybe give or take a year, um, I've been doing makeup online so quite a long time <laughs> so the next question is uh what's something you've learned in the last week that's actually a really great question um so hmm i think i can safely say uh i guess it's not really me learning more so my husband but i did help him um like i said he's been going so crazy and trying to learn how to make things in the kitchen um, and we made uh, homemade flour tortillas, so learned that last week. <laughs> and they were absolutely delicious and super, super easy. So that's something new I learned last week. The next one is, oh, this is a good question. What product would you stockpile if you found out it was being discontinued? <laughs> um, off the top of my head, uh, the pure love your selfie foundation because like I said, it's my holy grail. It's my absolute favorite I feel like I cannot be without it and funny enough Like I said, I was kind of itching to buy something this week. I was like I want I want to just shop I was like on Ulta. I know they're doing the 21 days days of beauty um, and I don't know. I just was like looking what's new. Is there anything I maybe want to buy or whatever? Um, and like I said, nothing was really catching my eye, but I was like and it's actually still in my shopping cart right now like i i may still purchase it but i've been like no you don't need it. not stop it you don't need it <laughs> um but i have actually another bottle of the the that foundation in a lighter shade because i feel like the one i'm wearing today i don't know if you guys can notice i feel like the lights make it match me a little bit better but i feel like the shade i have now which is mg5 which is already a lighter shade that i purchased from the one they sent me in pr so i purchased a new one in a lighter shade because the one they sent me in pr uh, matches me for my like 
uh, summer skin, my tanned skin, so I need a lighter shade for like me the rest of the year. But um, I feel like this one's already getting darker on me too, like it's not matching up. And I don't know if that's just because we haven't been outside as much, like just in this last month. Like really, am I really getting that much more pale from not being outside as much? I don't know, it's super weird. But I'm like, I think I need a lighter shade. And I'm like, I know I have other foundations in my drawer, other things that could probably match me right now. Um, but part of me is like, I don't want to wear anything else. I just want this foundation and I want it in a lighter shade. <laughs> um, so that's in my cart right now. And I'm still debating if I'm actually going to purchase a lighter shade or not. So anyways, I guess what I, getting around to it, like if I found out this foundation was going to be discontinued, oh, I would totally stockpile it because I just can't be without it. Like I said, I just don't want to... There's other foundations that I do like and I think are okay and I have been using. I've been making myself use them, but this foundation I always go back to. I just love it so much. I love the way, like how easy it is to apply on the skin. I love how it looks on the skin. I love the coverage. I love everything about it. I think it's just such a fabulous foundation that I do not want to be without. Like I do not want to be without this foundation. Uh, clear that tells you how much I love it. So I think I would stockpile that. I don't know if there's anything else I could think of that I love that much that I would stockpile. So, again, this is another question that I think, like, I would love to know your guys' answer to this. That's a really great question. Like, what would you stockpile? What do you love so much that if it were going to be discontinued, you would stockpile it? Let me know. I have two more questions, which is great because I'm pretty much done with my makeup. Um, but it says, how much weight have you lost since your surgery? So, when I got my surgery, I think I um, was a 169, right? Um, okay, this is going to bug me. I'm going to have to look it up real quick. Hold on. Okay, yes. So I was 169 when I went and had my surgery and currently I literally just weighed myself uh, yesterday. I am 157. So I've only lost, uh, well I hate saying only, that sounds so terrible, but it's just weird because it feels like, it feels like more. Like th the way my body is so different now um, from my before body, before surgery, and even right after I got home from surgery with the swelling and everything, my body has, I feel like, shrunk so much. Um, so it feels like so much more weight, but 12 pounds is the amount of weight that I've lost since my surgery. Um, but also I feel like it's possible that I have um, put on muscle, so I, uh, you know, the weight the weight I am might not seem like super low because I have been weight lifting and building muscle and things like that but I have been tracking my measurements um, and my you know measurements are definitely going down so I feel like smaller but weight wise it hasn't been like a crazy transformation um, but 12 pounds is still a good amount and things like that but um oh gosh it's it's <laughs> It's very interesting now because, like I said, we haven't been able to go to the gym. I definitely miss going to the gym and being stuck at home. Um, and, like, you know, I'm sure everybody, there's been memes going around, so I'm sure, like, I'm we are not the only ones dealing with this, but, like, the, the boredom eating is so real. Like, I have to be totally on, you know, trying to... Um, be good and behave eating wise because it's so easy to just want to like sit around and eat and like I said with my husband baking and making fresh bread and fresh tortillas and things like that and he made a um, a cheesecake recently it was so good <laughs> um it's easy just to like sit around and eat and just you know pack on the pounds and things like that so I've been trying to like be really cautious about, um, especially lately, how much I'm eating and things like that. Not overeating, not over snacking. Um, I do have elliptical in the house that I have utilized um, here and there, not as much as I should, <laughs> um, but have been utilizing and things like that. And like I said, we're still kind of doing little family workouts in our garage and things like that. But it's definitely not the same as what, as you know, how active I was before. So um, definitely got to be careful during this time, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so 12 pounds is what I've lost. And anyways, the last question is, was it hard? This is a really great question. Was it hard for you to adjust mentally to your new body? This is such a great question. Um, I think I kind of, I feel like I touched on this, um, a little bit and maybe my two month post-op video, um, I'll link that video. If you guys haven't seen uh, my uh, post-op videos, I've been um, doing a little uh, post-op update video every month. Um, so I think it was in my uh, second month post-op video. But um, I think I talked a little bit about how my body feels and how I kind of feel like sometimes um, I have phantom fat, like where 
Um, I still feel kind of heavier. I still feel like, like I forget sometimes that I've had, not that I forget, I mean you don't forget that you've had a surgery, but like my body sometimes still feels the same in a sense. I th and I think a big part of that is because I'm still numb in a lot of areas. And um, so anyways, I just feel like sometimes I, I feel like phantom fat um, until I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my gosh, like my, my body is so small. My waist is so small. I don't have that, you know, um, excess skin and belly fat and things like that. And it's so different. It's very um, weird. Um, but cool, like not in a bad way, it's just very different. So I think that's why I think this is a really good question. Was it hard for you to adjust mentally to your new body? Um, I wouldn't say hard, it's just very different. It's just very interesting. Like I love my new body, I'm so happy for it. I'm so happy for every, you know, the progress I've made, not only just with the surgery, but with, you know, weightlifting and just weight loss and my health journey and things like that. Like, um, I love it, I, I'm excited for it. But it is definitely different. Um, and I guess takes some getting used to, especially if you're someone who has, you know, been overweight most of your life, which I have. Um, and so it's, it's definitely different mentally. Like I sometimes, like I said, forget that I am the size I am now. It, it just, it, I almost sometimes feel the same, um, until I look in the mirror and then it's like, whoa, okay. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's not hard. It's just very different and I'm, I'm happy with my body and things like that but um yeah I think mentally it is very interesting um and very different but I but definitely not hard so I don't know I think that's a really great great question I don't know if I answered it well enough but um love that question so much I guess something else I could add to that is that like you know being my body before like obviously I had a lot of insecurities about my body about my stomach um, and things like that and um, you know wasn't wanting to like show off my my stomach and things like that and um, just you know you have your insecurities everybody does regardless of your size or weight or what you look like it doesn't matter everybody has insecurities you know and mine was my stomach and so it's it's funny um, you would think that with this surgery I would be you know less insecure or maybe want to like totally just show off my belly and um, this might seem funny because obviously I still do in a way show off my stomach because I post my before and after photos and I do my before and after videos and I'm essentially showing my body to the world. Um, but I feel like it's different because that's like a, like I'm kind of recording the process, but like in my everyday life, am I going out in crop tops or just like walking around my sports bra and showing the world my belly? Like, no, like I'm doing this stuff online because I'm tracking my progress, but has it made me like more confident or more secure um i mean i guess yes i'm more confident but i i'm still not in a place where i'm like oh let me just show off my belly let me just wear a belly shirt and like show off my belly so i guess i guess i just wanted to add that like it's funny and interesting that like even though um <sighs> i was really insecure about my stomach before and i like my stomach now i'm still not like i'm still like I guess the thing is I'm just shy like I'm still really really shy like and even my husband's surprised about it he's like your stomach looks great you don't want to show it off and I'm like no no I don't no I don't like I want to keep it to myself <laughs> like or you you know I just want to like I'm still very shy about it I guess I wouldn't say I'm insecure about it but it's just still like I'm I'm still very shy about my 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 belly and I'm not like in a place to like show it off so anyways I don't know if that really um, goes to the question as well but just a thought that I had that I you know, I thought might be interesting to share. <laughs> Maybe that's something that'll change down the line. I'm not quite sure, but as of right now, I'm still pretty shy about about my stomach. While I still love my results and love the way it's looking, I don't know, I'm, I'm still pretty shy about my body and things like that. But anyways, that is it. My makeup is complete and those were all the questions that I was asked. They were really great questions. A random variety of questions, but I really appreciated all of them and really enjoyed answering them. So I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing my answers. And again, like I said throughout this video, I would love to hear uh, your answers to some of these questions. I thought they were very interesting questions, so I'd really love to hear from you guys. Um, but anyways, and that wraps it up for this video. Hope you guys are staying healthy and safe but with all that being said I just want to thank you so so much for watching and until next time much love and hugs to you bye beauty babes Mwah.